to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to be building some ancient ruins. So I kind of decided to do this project uh, mainly because it's a, a bit of a smaller project. Uh, actually, unfortunately, uh, hurt myself at work. Uh, and I was kind of out of the uh, crafting business for a couple of weeks there. I was uh, too sore to sit at my crafting table. I couldn't even walk for a couple of days. But anyways, I'm feeling much better. I'm on the mend and I decided to do something a little bit smaller. And uh, I figured... You know, this would be a good time to kind of go through the buckets in my in the plunder den and look through the scraps that I have and uh, see if I can come up with a, a project out of it. There's also stuff that I, I, you know, I go to the hobby store, I go to the Michael's craft store, the dollar store, and I just pick up things that I think, you know, maybe I can use that for a future project. Not necessarily a specific project when I go there. And that's really what I do. I just buy what I call materials. And, uh, and I just kind of like, pick through them and decide that I'm going to build something. So I decided to build ancient ruins with the scraps in the plunder den. That would be a good project to get back on the saddle. I have some big plans to do the governor's mansion and the tavern and all these other big, big projects that are probably going to take multiple episodes. Uh, but this is something uh, that we can do quickly and something that's, I would say, fairly simple to, to construct. So let's take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to maybe show these two at the same time so you guys can take a look at it. They're, they're kind of uh, like, uh, well, they're both cats. We got a leopard here, and uh, I think this was a tiger, but I'm, it kind of looks like a panther. Uh, in Aztec culture, uh, leopards and panthers were kind of uh, uh, big as the symbols that they used in, in their ancient cities, and that's what I kind of wanted to capture on here, on these little pieces here. Now, now I've used these jewelry pieces before from Michaels, um, and they're kind of, they, they look like... Uh, crests on an Aztec wall or something like that. Uh, and so I, I added those on to this piece and it kind of fits in with the other terrain I've already created along the same lines. And I also built this other piece here. It's just like a, like a chunk of a wall. Uh, and same thing, using that same design. Uh, and I was able to use another piece of that uh, from that uh, crate that I got, the uh, at Adepticon, so this crate over here, uh, the fantasy crate, has this kind of these obelisks or something like these stone things. And I thought this one had a little more of a, it's got like a snake on it or something like that. Uh, and then I created all these different stones. Now I've done this kind of stonework in the past, um, but I came up with a better method for making them. And they look a lot better than my old ones that I did on the temple. So I kind of improved on a, a thing that I've done in the past. All right, so those are all the pieces that we are going to build uh, on today's episode. I just do want to do a quick reminder before we get down to the table uh, that uh, for really got till the end of today. Uh, this is Tuesday. I, I'm filming this a couple days before that, but uh, uh, till the end of today to get your submissions in for the Terrain Flash Challenge. Uh, so I've gotten some submissions already. Uh, just make sure you post them on my uh, Facebook page or uh, just link my name in it so I can see it. You can put it on the uh, the Blood Plunder main page there uh, and uh, or go on your Instagram and just tag me in it. Uh, just make sure you get those pictures out right away by the end of today. I'll give you to the end of tonight uh, to submit them. Uh, and then uh, we'll kind of, uh, as a group, uh, uh, join up with the Blood and Pigment team that uh, ran the painting competition and kind of judge on... Uh, who's going to win the Terrain Flash Challenge. So the ones I've seen so far look fantastic. Uh, I can't wait to see uh, the rest of them come in. So uh, you got till the end of today uh, to get that in. All right, uh, and then, uh, that's so that's pretty much it for there. Uh, and we got the Summer of Plunder coming up soon. Uh, I would go over to the Blood and Pigment page and, and get details on that. Should be in a couple of weeks. We should be uh, rolling into the Summer of Plunder. Uh, and there'll be all sorts of uh, awesome challenges in there and lots of prizes that you can win. Um, so I recommend you go over there. I'll put a link to uh, the Blood and Pigment page again to uh, in the description in this video here. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table. Let's start painting and let's start crafting. <music> All 
Okay, so this is kind of my pile of materials that I found around the plunder den. And some of the stuff I used and some of it I didn't. Uh, it's a dollar store foam board. I definitely used that. I didn't end up using a whole lot of wood in this project. Uh, I don't think I actually did use any. Uh, these are uh, from egg cartons. A uh, bunch of stones that I cut out uh, from a paper textured uh, egg carton. That's just what it looks like right there, just showing you. Uh, some willow fencing, which I never used. Uh, that styrofoam, which I do use. <laughs> there will be some other uses for that uh, white stuff. Uh, some insulation foam, I did uh, use some of that. I got some jewelry from Michaels. This is stuff that I've used in the past for some of my Aztec ruins that I built in the past. Um, just assorted uh, like jewelry from Michaels. This is uh, from Adepticon, that uh, Mantic uh, terrain kit I got. There, there it is, the box. <laughs> They actually gave me four of those in there, and they're all different, so they're kind of cool. Also, some assorted animals. Uh, got some leopards and tigers and kind of things here. I think I plan on using it as a, like a panzer uh, for my statues. So I've been I bought that tube of animals and been wanting to use it for a project, and uh, this seemed like the right one. So really, I started off uh, cutting out a piece of dollar store foam board like I usually do. A couple of bases for, I'm going to do three different pieces of uh, ruins here. Uh, I'm going to hit it with the uh, multi-surface black full card craft paint first, uh, just to straighten those out and uh, get make sure that they're not warping, uh, and uh, so I can uh, build a good base to build on. So then I kind of just did some generic, like, planning out how these pieces are going to look. So this is really my planning stage. I know I'm going to use my uh, hot glue gun and uh, just, you know, i got some chunks of foam here. I kind of wanted to do this design. And really, I was just playing with the blocks for a while, and I came up with, like, these statues uh, and uh, that uh, kind of walled-up area. And I'm just going to hot glue that all together. Now, I didn't hot glue the uh, tigers on right away. I kind of just uh, glued the rest of it together and moved on to doing some bricks just because I wanted to maybe do some altering to those uh, cats first before I put them on. So this is just dollar store foam board. As you can see, I, I use my uh, my mat, my cutting mat here to measure out uh, the exact size of the squares of the tiles I wanted. Now this is what I did different than ones in the past. Before I, I hand drew them in with a, with a dowel and they just kind of didn't look, they look not very well, let's just say. So I kind of wanted to use the pattern that's on this jewelry that I found. It's kind of got like a South American feel already, Aztec feel. And I just pressed it into the foam. And I got these lovely designs in my little little tiles here. I also uh, sanded the corners of those tiles too, so they look more like a tile than just a square piece of foam. And I'm just showing you where I plan on gluing them. So this is a two-part piece, uh, two different types of jewelry from Michaels. That the green one is kind of it's just actually wood actually, and uh, and then just this kind of metal medallion, which actually surprisingly fits perfectly on the inside. <laughs> So I just used my Gorilla Glue and super glued those two together. Uh, and this is kind of uh, the detail I wanted to put on one side of the wall. It actually matches the temple that I built, which was one of the first things I built on my channel, uh, on the first piece of terrain that I built. And I kind of did the same technique with these uh, white uh, tiles, but uh, I improved on them, as I mentioned uh, just recently here, that uh, was the uh, pressing it in the design opposed to, uh, you know, drawing it in. So then I'm just showing you to use those foam bricks there uh, to, this is just leftover stuff I had from my previous project. I should have built, was building some stone walls and I'm just going to trim that out on there uh, on the bottom. So just kind of frame it out with those bricks and then add in those decorative bricks and just glue it on with tacky glue, white tacky glue. So this is how I did the design. Kind of made it look like there's some supports on there. This is why I decided to not to go with the timber. I wanted to go with the, uh, you know, ancient ruins and Aztecs, they wouldn't have used uh, too much uh, timbers. And most of it's stonework, right? So I wanted to stick to stonework on here and not add timbers. And that's kind of why I didn't end up using any wood. And I'll just show you where I'm planning on gluing. I actually hot glue that on there uh, to glue it on fast. Uh, and I decided to make a broken one on the other side so like things are falling apart. And you can see I've used the uh, white stuff, that uh, terrible... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> foam that you get packing foam and i use it as like destroyed blocks or, or rubble that are coming out of the walls and i kind of just glued them randomly on places and you can see i damaged the uh the, the tigers here or the uh leopards here 
and the kind of the top of that one just to make it look more you know like they're damaged statues it would be damaged over time um but i kind of wanted to keep a lot of the shape of it so you knew what it was i didn't want to damage it too far and i'm showing you more of that uh packing foam that i'm adding on uh these are the egg cartons that i had left over and just put some some basic tiles down like there's there was some stone floor there at one point but i left an opening for where i'm going to i'm going to put that thing on last that uh obelisk there i just kind of want to do all the rest of it first before i glue that down so i can paint it right it's easier to paint when it's loose and i'm just showing you i'm going to add more egg carton stones to kind of like a road on one side and then i'm going to have like a pathway and trees on the other side that's kind of how i decided to lay them out so I really, I'm just kind of, as I'm going along, deciding what I'm going to do here. So I decided to add some palm trees. I figured there'd be some uh, larger plant life grown over time. And I'm just going to use my box cutter, or my X-Acto blade, or hobby blade here, to cut off the, uh, really just the mold lines on here. I've, I've done this before on the channel where I've altered trees. Uh, and then use a pair of scissors to cut some of the... Uh, there's a lot of residue left over on the on the palms on these trees that I got from Amazon. And I just want to trim them up so they look a little bit more realistic and get rid of some of that excess plastic that's on them. And I'm just showing you after I've added those stones on the one side, this is kind of what it just looks like. doesn't look like much right now. <laughs> it looks kind of funny. Uh, but once you paint it all black, then you can start seeing where we're going with this whole thing. It just looks like I'm just putting random stuff gluing it on here, but uh, it will look like something when we're done. So now I'm going to add the black craft paint to absolutely everything here, including the stems of the trees. Uh, and this in, these entire pieces will be covered in black craft paint. This will also give it strength, seal it in, uh, and uh, give you a good base to paint over. And I'm also going to do that stone. Now I'm just showing you again, mentioning that I'm not gluing it in immediately. Uh, I'm just and, uh, uh, going to wait till uh, after I'm done painting. That also is a little bead. I use those beads, uh, it's another one from Michael's, uh, for pots and stuff, like, like, a uh, pottery of some sort. And, uh, I was gonna put some next to that obelisk, maybe there. You know, some kind of pottery that's there. Alright, so this is after I've added the black craft paint. You can see everything's starting to come together now. It looks like something, <laughs> opposed to just random stuff glued to a dollar store foam board. Uh, and uh, this is kind of how I want it to look. These look like two uh, pretty good statues. And I'm, I'm pretending like one is a, like a leopard. And one actually is a leopard. And the other one is probably a panther. I'm just trying to use animals that would be in Aztec culture. Um, I mean, a lot of their paintings and drawings and stuff. And you can see the, there's uh, textured stones. So those uh, impressions that I put in with that uh, jewelry came out great. That uh, was... Uh, Way better idea than actually trying to hand draw it in there. It looks more realistic this way. I'll get a better effect. And you can see that I did the stems of the trees. So now we're going to start doing my uh, general undertones. Uh, I'm going to start with the real brown. And we're going to do absolutely do everything here. So we're just going to kind of stop at every one of the undertones. Just to see kind of how I applied the paint. What it looks like when I'm done adding each color. Um... You know, you can go overboard with some of these colors and, like, you don't want to cover all the black. You can see there's, there's still black showing through some places because uh, you want to have all these subtle undertones. So then we're going to go to some uh, bark brown. This is a lighter brown and uh, one I always use. And you can see that now you can see some of the real brown and the black still underneath. So you're going to see all the different tones in there. And we're just creating shadowing and... Uh, a good base color for the colors that we're going to apply over top. So I'm hitting that little stone to it while we're at it, uh, and the stems of the trees. So all of it being done at the same time. And then I move on to Pablo. This is really my bright color that kind of adds a really a lot of highlights to everything, but still staying in those uh, earth tone colors. Uh, and I forgot to mention that I add those to the base bottom. I like to paint the bottom. You don't have to paint the bottom, but I like to paint the bottom while I'm going along. It just kind of finishes the whole piece up. And then just showing you uh, what it looks like after I've added all those highlights. And done those obelisk and uh, all the statues and the trees. Everything was that Pablo. So now I'm going to move to camel. Now this is usually what uh, my first color I use for stonework. So there's a lot of stonework here. Uh, I'm kind of going to do it everything except for kind of the base there, uh, what I kind of pointed at. That I'm going to leave kind of a ground color. 
Um, but I'm going to add it to the stem of the trees and all the stonework here, all these uh, stones that I added. Uh, but anything that's barren, I don't, I'm just going to leave it uh, that earth, like kind of a muddy color. So this is after I've added the camel. You can see which areas I left brown and which ones uh, I've added to the camel to. This kind of just gives you a good base for uh, stonework. You start with that uh, color, and then you start adding colors on top of that. And, of course, we're going to do uh, a lot of uh, weathering. Now, there's just going to be a lot of just uh, colors I'm going to show you that I'm going to be using. Um, there is stonework uh, a video that I have here. It shows you how to paint stonework with just craft paint. Uh, and I have other uh, painting tutorials on uh, my channel. Uh, there's one for weathering buildings uh, where I do more of uh, the washes. Um, just so you get an idea how to do that. So really, I'm just going to cover some of the colors. So we've got mummy robe, necrotic flesh, um, uh, skeleton bone and desert yellow. Those are our, those are the four colors I use for um, stonework. Now again, you could go to that stone tutorial I have where I substituted craft paint colors in for that, so you don't have to use these expensive paints. And I got dark wood and hardened leather, um, Agrax earth shader and uh, um, skeleton uh, hoard. These are all the, I like to use speed paints now a lot more and weathering than just uh, just these uh, contrast paints. And this is the one I can't say, the Sipia there. <laughs> I can't even say that name. But anyways, I think you know which one I'm talking about. It's a uh, Games Workshop um, tone. So you can see this is after I've added all that on there. And really we got, you know, I contemplated just leaving it like this. I mean, if I had more of a, uh, but it, it's in the jungle, right? So I can't leave it like that. But I, I really like the way it looks right now, to be honest. I didn't want to add more colors to it. Um, but uh, uh, I, I wanted to give it more of a jungle feel. So there's a lot of plant life and stuff we're going to add to it. Uh, it has to look like it's been in the jungle for a long time, right? So there'd be a lot of growth on it and uh, and a lot of plant life growing here. So I'm just showing you all the pieces after I've added all those colors. I know it's kind of a lot of steps. I didn't want to... I think uh, I might have to do a painting tutorial where I do it uh, start to finish with all the different colors and adding the weathering in. Some people might get a uh, uh, benefit from that. Uh, why don't you leave a comment down below if you're interested in me doing a larger uh, painting tutorial. So then we've got Angel Green here, Commando Green, uh, Jungle Green, and that's uh, Dynamic Yellow or Dynamic Yellow. I use those for the palm trees, so the leaves. So I'm going to start from dark to light. And then orange, uh, more Pablo here, and this Hydra uh, Turquoise. It's kind of like... A, I, I want to kind of add some color to the like there's some paint left over on these ancient ruins and orange and blue are some common colors you would see in uh, Aztec and Mayan. So uh, I wanted to add those uh, teal color and uh, orange color there. So this is a malignant green and camo cloak. Um, and we got uh, Graveland gray. These are uh, more speed paints, and they're actually really good for uh, kind of like stuff you'd find on the bottom of a jungle floor. They have a combination of those colors are fantastic. Uh, and then we'll add some mummy robe at the very end to, you know, there's always white specks or bird droppings or whatever that fall on top afterwards. I kind of did that on my other island project, and I kind of like the way that looks. So this is after I've added. You can see all those greens that I added on there. I really like these uh, speed paints for weathering. Uh, I'm starting to lean more to speed paints now than 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 the washes. Uh, I find that uh, I like the the effects I can get uh, with the uh, speed paints. I know they're intended for uh, painting miniatures, but I'm end up using it for more weathering. So I'm going to raid all these uh, Adepticon uh, pieces of terrain I brought back. i got all sorts of tufts. Uh, this is a standard brown battleground uh, that I use from Army Painter. Um, some static grass. we got some light yellow and uh, the mossy green. So I kind of do a combination mixture of those two on this piece. And, of course, our trees are all done now. Uh, and that's really the first step I want to do is uh, kind of hot glue those uh, palm trees in first before I start adding any plant life. So this is after I've added those in there. And the great thing about having those foam sides, you can kind of hot glue those trees in there. And you get kind of a base to stick it in. 
Uh, and you can see I have that little tuft there. That's the uh, end of a smaller tree. So when you buy them from Amazon, you get all sorts of different scale palm trees in there. And so I, the smaller ones are good for just doing bushes. So just, you know, if you don't want to use a smaller scale, I don't have a, I don't do smaller scale models, uh, but they're great for bushes. Uh, so I'm just showing you, I'm going to add some other stuff in here. So I'm going to try this four in one scatter as well. I know I'm kind of going through all sorts of different products on here, but really you, you could just use, uh, I got this dollar store. This is moss. That's from the dollar store that I cut up with scissors. You know, it's a buck. You could use that and skip all these expensive products that I have here and get a pretty good look. I just started adding all sorts of uh, this crazy stuff that I got from Adepticon on there. But I, like I said, you could just stick to the dollar store uh, moss. Uh, and I'm showing you the stuff I already, we, I already showed you in the previous segment, but um, I kind of changed my mind. I figured I would do more of the moss. And actually, the majority of the groundwork that's on here is actually that dollar store uh, moss that I cut up. And then I just kind of added some sprinkles of the other stuff in, in key areas. Uh, you know, it's just to make it uh, more cost effective. Again, you can get that moss in different colors, um, which, you know, I might do a project where I'm just using the dollar store stuff and not using any of the expensive stuff. But I wanted to try out some of that new product. All right, so this is the final pass through. Uh, we kind of had that ancient wall we were just looking at. This is one of the uh, statues. Um, like I said, it would be a panzer or a, um, a leopard. Uh, like I said, that's in the Aztec art. So I'm pretty happy how this project turned out, considering you know this this uh, material left over. I, I'm really happy with this. Actually, these came out good, and they fit really nice with all my other jungle terrain that I've built already. Yeah, I feel it uh, fits in nice, uh, and uh, I'll get a lot of use out of this uh, added to with my other jungle terrain. All right, so that's pretty much a wrap on this episode. Thanks so much, everyone. Music